Time. I'm working so. It's fine. I'm the cream of the crop. I rise to the top. I never eat a pig because a pig is a cop. I better yet a term. Okay. Hello, world. I want to turn off the looping, but yeah, hello. Hello, Naoto. Hello, people in the chat. Uh, yes, so this was the short reel for the presentation of my school, um, the Erasmus of South Brussels. Um, and yet, Naoto, you were sharing about, you were like these days, you were working with editing video, no? Yeah, so we had like one week of seminar and like last week, well, five days plus a little bit on Sunday. And basically it's like experiment. Like it's not like, well, some students prepared some installations and then they install it, but um, a few students were just like hanging out, well, like working on their stuff and just, it's more like open studio, you know, like it's not like you present uh, as an exhibition, but they were just keep working and showing whatever projection sound work that's there. And I did some, uh, well, I'm not, you know, like I didn't really do it professionally, but I brought my action camera, like a little GoPro kind of camera. And uh, I was yeah editing videos, just trying to make a show reel kind of thing. And yeah, so that's that's why like, I was just editing the video when you when you uh, uh, sent me sent me a message and. But you were mentioning for you were mentioning for something in particular. Ah, uh, yeah, because um, so I don't know how you how you edited it, but basically, for me, um, the sound is uh, I'm using the sound from one of the students. She is um, music producer and. Basically, yeah, her her song is you know like techno, and if you use like that kind of sound, then you really want to synchronize the video, like really. Ah, okay, on the beat. Uh, on the beat, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. By the way, uh, just to shout out, uh, Swan Swan Meat. That's her artist name. If you search on, I don't know, Spotify or something, you can find it. Um, is is really cool. Sweet actually. name. Sweet name. Yeah. Swan Pig? Swan Meat. I thought Swan Pig. <laughs> Maybe you should consider it to Swan Pig because it resonates. <laughs> um, no, but the way how I was like doing this, because this it comes from like now to the like four minutes um, short reel at some point when actually in that track, in that chat, we were discussing the. We, we showed uh, it here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once, and we yeah. Yeah, and and, I ha and also I highlight that in the in my magazine as user testing because it's kind of like one of yeah the only time we have like really feedback from people when we collect these questions and we actually did it one by one uh, you and me together trying to and then we propose this Q and O instead of a Q and A right questions and options instead of a Q and answer and yeah but so what i was so what i was uh, saying is that the way how i was i, I play with the sound i, I thought of it before because i was supposed to uh yeah to do just 30 seconds i thought like okay it should be very uh exciting and fast you know more like a product almost kind of thing like pushing like more as a teaser and then I thought maybe I should just like really select the proper music with a high vibe and something. But then through the video, I found that because there are so different chunks of the practice, the practice itself have, uh, in this case, it has this sound of Cypress Hill there in the background. Uh, and then I just use that as a as the music. and And then, yeah. 
then I I kind of like at some point I I think I start like I plan to do almost because it was 30 seconds to to do like I don't know I kind of like divide it very, very strictly like every clip for I don't know five seconds or, or something but then after it was very boring because it's just like boom 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 yeah. and you can still see what is happening which is good from the the show reel that you present is it are long clips so you can you can still have some, have more sense of what is happening before it jumps to the next one so in this one the time was not working like that uh and then it has to be more dynamic so then i just use the yeah i just throw away my idea of like strictly clips in that way and then just put it in some kind of more easier kind of way i guess yeah for, for me it's well i named it show real because why not but uh it's like four minutes and the reason why i did it was because of like one of the submissions i think for, like video um to give, give an, an idea of what we do. So that's why it's not like a real show reel. Um, yeah, anyways. But I think what is cool from this is because I'm I, I, now I start I have started thinking to the my defense of my, of my thesis in my school. And then I think in the thesis itself, I, I will show or either this video that you made before, there is four minutes, or I might select other chunks, but like long chunks to give more sense uh, of what is happening. Because I think that was more the purpose, that's the whole I take more the purpose, or it works. Uh, the functionality of that video is in letting know the person who is watching uh, what is happening, or to give a bit more of time for the person to stay a little bit within all these things that are happening so for me uh i think this i would call more like a video this kind of video is it should be self-explanatory in the sense of a practice right like like not in the sense of manipulating information which in a way is how i feel more or less i did with this with a short reel you know they're just using the beep in certain way and just kind of put it cool like, almost like, as a product kind of teaser teasing somebody but i think that if uh, one wants to use a video to uh, to support an idea like in the sense like the presentation then i will let something run for a longer periods with chunks because then the person itself can slow down and try to make its own connection with what is happening Maybe as well it can get bored and just start watching in his phone, but it's fine. It's that's what they do. Yeah, I mean that's that's the hard part, right? Um, I think in my version there is one or two videos from the development. No, not the development, but like uh, the beginning of the practice when not many things are happening because I told it um, specifically for that submission. I wanted to give the idea of how, yeah, just like you said, you know how the how long it is and how, you know, it's not just like everything's um, choreographed and, you know, just going next to so, next. Yeah, something that I think I was thinking also is like, I'm kind of like prepared to, it was also clear clarified in my magazine at some point when I explained the framework is that I said that one might like or not like one or this practice or this practice because of the aesthetics or because of music or because the internet delay or because because and that's totally fine because the practice in itself as we know but maybe some people who are here now they don't know is the practice itself is not the pro there's not a product or there's, there's not a final aiming with the practice more than practicing so then it's totally fine if one practice is not if, i mean is trying to give agency in a way to the person to decide by, by themselves, like, I don't like this one. Uh, and yeah, and I'm thinking already in that, like, yeah. And yeah. because for instance, like I was thinking in my, in the last live stream that we have, I have massive delays that and the last part when we are dancing and then my, my movements are like super chunk. So it's not as smooth as it happens with yours. There is next, next to it. Um, it's just because so of I, like screen sharing and all these things, right? Just slows down the 
computer or the, the network. Yeah, I don't know what was it. Because when my computer, I it wasn't delayed, but okay. when I see in the streaming, it was delayed. Yeah, was I, I was I was I already noticed when we were doing the practice. Yeah, I see because you have this small screen of my small square of myself there, and I saw myself there. I was like uh, delayed, like uh 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 yeah. yeah it's true. Um, yeah. But that's yeah. I mean, that's something like I tr sometimes like consciously try to have less load on the computer so it doesn't lag too much. Um, uh, and also like this is more like a stage design, but like these days I try to make. Um, at one point, I try to make this the whole desktop like really clean and just have one or two windows in there. Um, yeah, that's, that's more like aesthetics, um, aesthetical decision. And I like it at the same time. I try to, you know, make sure that it's not like, I'm not trying to, to reach something with this, you know, it's not that I try to find a nice picture, like Instagrammable thing or um, like, it, it's hard because then it feels like next time I have to make this nice image again. Right. And that really limits what I want to do. Yeah. Like, I mean, but, but I think I was reflecting on the last uh, live stream we have, the last practice. And what I liked very much from that practice is that I was so unprepared that I was not so that I didn't have time to stress. And then it was very, it just is very cool. I mean, it's just very joyful to, uh, it just brings a lot of joy because I don't have, if I will have time, maybe I will, I will think, maybe I will try to do something similar that works some sessions before. And as you said, that my, already you, it puts you, it puts you in a place, no? Yeah. 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 And wait, last time when, were you using VDMX or what? The last time I used VDMX, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this this we already talked about in the last chat, I think, with Floor, like you know, that kind of the communication thing that sometimes you know it. I don't know if I talk should talk to you or not, but uh, yeah. But last time was uh, really chill, I think. But I think it also was cool that because I mentioned to Naoto some time ago, like maybe I don't know when exactly, maybe two weeks ago, that that I wish to maybe use more my, more my equiputas and things that like like use it is this kind of word is like a bad word for like cursing in Spanish. And that's something that in, in my personal life, I do, yeah, I just express the way how I express myself often. And a way how we were doing uh, often because things are not working very often is like we try to then not stress too much out um, and then say that everything is fine, more or less in that line. And and two weeks ago, I expressed to know to the maybe I would like not to be, or to express, that maybe everything is not fine from my point and if I need it then to express uh, but that's interesting because then of course it has to be I'm not alone there so I have to communicate with Naoto um, so although I want to express and find my my fully a, a place where I feel that I, I can that I can completely express myself I'm not alone so it's this tiny place where yeah, there's the negotiation between that, the two of us, basically, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, I think from, how do I say, it? second to the last practice and the last one also, uh, I was using more videos, uh, like dance videos. Yeah, that's true. Videos. How come? Yeah, how come that? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, sorry, but it's just no, that's, 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 so that's because of you. Because, uh, like, I think the one 
uh, not the last one, but the second to the last, we talked about using your text yeah. in some ways and then because uh, for your um, thesis or magazine and that has some text about the history of uh, like digital art and stuff right. and there's the Nam Jun Pek and uh, who else was it? Uh, Merce 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 Merce. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, that video, which, which was funny because I think I've seen that video. Yeah, I, I saw it at uh, Nam Jun Pek uh, Museum when I visited in Korea. It was on the huge screen, but somehow wow. I kind of forgot about it. Uh, and someone, I don't know how these things work, but someone uh, uploaded on uh, YouTube. So I was playing I will, it. Yeah. I will share this this image for a second. Oh no, okay. I just share my. Can you see this? Yeah. 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 So that's the that's one of the image that uh, that it was built uh, during the practice. Yeah, and uh, well, it's hard to see it, but in the background, the the video is there uh, from the Merce by Merce by Peck, and the text is overlaid on top. It's it's really <laughs> condensed. Um, and, but it's so but it's so perfectly done on like you're almost like you're hugging it, it really feels <laughs> like like will be very difficult to you know always when you're working in these three-dimensional spaces like when you when bodies come close and they touch each other you know like the perfect example of what i'm trying to say is when trying to put feet on the ground right that's really difficult to really make it realistic somebody like feet on the ground and this one, it looks like really, really well done. Like you're like, like I'm there, you're hugging. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, this was really nice. I mean, and also like, I think I consciously choose the colors uh, at some point. I think there was one from September or something that I, oh, but that one I was red, but because Jorge often uh, you use the red color on your body and I thought like that's like so you use red and I use blue somehow <laughs> and that's kind of the, the color true. palette that uh, like that's these true. days I, I I choose it uh, actually I never talk about it this in the chat but when I like recolor uh, us then that's what I cho choose so that's there and uh, also I try to make it clean, although there's like YouTube uh, window on the side, which is, you know, playing the, the original video from the- Yeah, you know what I was thinking also, because I have to choose also some key images to share. And then like, kind of, yeah, like two, three key images. And then I thought like, uh, like the, the, this image, for instance- Sorry, uh, it has you, a... sorry, sorry, you shared the window and now I'm not seeing other things. I mean, you have to uh, add the Zoom stuff. Like you have to share yeah. again or share the desktop. I feel it's so much easier if we do it on live lab. Anyways. Can you, no, you cannot see this. Can you yeah, know? Now, now it's a whole, whole desktop, which is good. Okay. Yeah. So in this case, for instance, I was thinking at some point like, hmm, should I just uh, crop this image, right? But because the YouTube was there. And then at the same time, I thought like, but actually, in a way, this is part of the of what it was. I mean, it was taken at that point, and that was that was what's happening at that moment. So in a way, I think it's similar what happens in photography, that if you ask to a photographer often, and you will say it, or I, I just said it last week to somebody who's making photography, like and he's taking photographies of plants so i said like so you 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 should have very nice images of plants right and the guy was saying like no because basically he was referring to that he just takes pictures of the of the moment right like that's kind of like the magic of the photography to kind of capture the moment so in that sense if we go back to that image like trying to clean and crop uh, just the the nice aesthetically, it will take away part of the moment, which is the YouTube screen that was there. Right. Uh, but it's funny how to nego how to negotiate with that, you know, because you know somebody's asking you for a good image. Basically, they were asking me 
select a good image that you would like to put almost like in a and I was thinking like this is good but I don't like that one and then I thought like yeah yeah I just I just submitted the, the image like that because it represents the motion yeah of, yeah the moment right yeah um so that's that's why like I, I talked about the you know white background and try to make it green um which is like on one hand it's like it feels like I'm like limiting myself with what I work with so that um, I try to tidy up the desktop and try to make something nice that can you know lead to uh, some limitations but at the same time on the, on the other hand I think it, what's nice about it is it it has you know it, I start to feel that I can really like make use of the space on the desktop um that because i consciously think about you know what's shown what's recorded the stream on obs and then i really um even like in the the, the image you showed it's it doesn't look i mean i don't know like it's the right word but it doesn't look bad like it's it has some kind of confidence to be there as a like a performative windows <laughs> i don't know if you agree but that's that's how i i feel it what i what i noticed is like in the late the late in the last maybe two sessions you have been um uh, you make the you make almost like a clean canvas it's true that you're like, like it's more clean the canvas in the background yeah like is more clean what happens when it's more clean so is there are less things floating is more clean yeah i don't know i just feel it but i don't I'm thinking like is it good there is it more clean and in my head i'm thinking like mm -hmm. what does that actually i'm thinking like those that bother me i was trying to think like those that but i don't think that does something but it also came from the idea that we talked about, you know, don't show the naked body, I mean, naked, the, the okay. this camera thing. And that start make me think, you know, what is shown there? It's like not always live lab on the window. And yeah, yeah and that's, that's why, I mean, not saying it's good or bad, but. Um, yeah, but I think, I think that's, that, that's something that like, I think in my case, because I have the three, the three screens, including my, the, my laptop then i do yeah i basically i just jump between the scenes because the left one will have i get i guess all the clusters so like live lab and maybe sometimes hydra and then the right one will have sometimes just this main clean just one uh or is the main output of uh that i'm doing a bdmx mixed with the, uh live lab somehow it's like a main composition that takes the whole screen and in the middle is the one that I will do different things. Like it's more like a control base. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was thinking because maybe I think in Puff I did it once. I did a practice without the wind, without the two screens. I remember, and they were, I have no chroma key. We should do that soon. Also, like I would like to to do that again soon. And, and also, I want to try, I want to propose you how to do this because of the, in seats, they have this, this installation that we are building. They found these massive projection screens for movie projection, I guess. They have like three big ones, but they're big. I don't know, they're like very big. And so at some point, I think I will propose a practice and I want to see what happens uh, just doing, just my, taking just my computer and just trying to project somehow to you to utilize that big projection and maybe what i will propose there is to actually if people want to come like to not maybe not make it as a something special but if it's part of just one day that by chance i'm just start doing some stuff and um so i'm curious to see how that might go could be cool also maybe if we make it how to make something like that in the space. Because like, so we both in the same space because basically it's 
the way how I imagine is that I have to basically move my laptop around a little bit. So, so then I would move in the space in different places, just sit, start doing something, uh, dancing, and then maybe move somewhere else, start doing the same and repeating the process because the space is very, very big. Mm. So I'm wondering how could be that uh, like with you? That could be interesting because the space is so big so then you're not, so I guess sometimes you come together, but uh, I think the difference with Node is like, because we were in, in just in a limited space, like we'll be, we'll be cool in this space to see what happens because the space is like, I don't know, like 15 meters or maybe 20 meters in between. Mm. It's like hide and uh, seek. It's like hide and seek. And in the, in the middle, you have this massive installation also with all these things that they are completely from other contexts also that that will be interesting to see just yeah i think like the what i'm thinking on that is like i think that thinking too much or preparing too much to do something in that space it will be just the wrong approach because it just it will just make things more complicated what they are yeah uh, i think i think instead it should be more like on the spot see do something and by chance ah by the way there is just this massive installation there so be yeah. no but this is this is something really like i think i always think about it you know like making ad hoc and try to be fluid with what you have um but i think these days i'm getting way better at this like for example yesterday um so what happened was uh so i had this thing in a week last week uh, and on Friday it was finished and some equipments were like already packed and um, uh, but some are like left on site I mean in the storage and on Sunday we had to show something because people from the city were visiting so we had to like show whatever we have there but some because some things are missing and not everyone's there um, we had a projector we had some DMX lights but we didn't have computer. <laughs> and uh, what else were we missing? Uh, we didn't have internet connection. And really? I totally didn't know that uh, people were visiting. <laughs> so I ran to, came back home and uh, took my tablet, uh, computer, which is not really great, but uh, with every adapter I can bring uh, with HDMI to, actually HDMI mm -hmm. cable as well, because uh, I, Later, I noticed that they only had display port, but I mean, HDMI connector, but no HDMI cable. So it's good that I brought the cable. Yeah. And uh, I didn't have internet connection, so I couldn't open Hydra. So I opened OBS. And uh, you know, like OBS, you can add some filters, like color filters and stuff. And you can do yeah. the chroma key or luma key. So I set up luma key and crop people because the background was uh it's, it's like outside and the background is super bright but we we're in a kind of arch or tunnel so we were really dark so we did like yeah. i did the luma key to to cut to the bright part and the bottom layer is the screen capture so you can do feedback loop with, just with obs and i added like color like slightly shifted the feedback so it started like become like a hydra kind of feedback loop but how do you do the feedback like through uh, through the camera through analog camera or no just oh yes so i have my image i can i can actually try it uh if i can do it that would be really cool uh but that was that was really nice because i just did whatever I could do and not relying or not panicking uh, that I cannot do this or that because of the limitation. Okay, so how do I do it? So right now I switch to OBS virtual camera and then I do Luma key. Was oh, it color key or uh, Luma key? Yeah. So you can crop the background like this. We'll take away the bright, the brightest. Yeah, I mean it's not perfect, but you know that's yeah, what yeah. it is. And then um, you do uh, 
Let's say display capture, maybe. And then you display it in the back. Yeah, you just have to change the layers and then lock myself. No. And then, yeah, like this. Well, like it's it's just like where we how we started actually. Yeah, yeah, because we yeah at the beginning we did, like the first session we did like, ah actually so it's it's just you it's just a screen it's record a screen recording the uh, your image, the yeah. position of your yeah yeah it's a screen recording yeah. yeah, and then actually like what uh, I want to make it a bit bigger, and. Like at last, I just add like a uh, color filters to the feedback, like effect, color correction, and then hue shift. So something like this. Up uh, and then there is a, a hue that is shifting every second or every certain time. There is some color that is. Yeah, I just because I added hue shift to the the screen capture, so it's. Capturing it again and again every and again. Time. Yeah, yeah. It's so simple. Like I, I can boost saturation as well. Cool. And you know, people Super are impressed. Nice. Although I just set up OBS. Yeah, you I saw? think this is a, Yeah. I think it's interesting that how to yeah bypass the 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 tool itself, no, like if it's not working, Hydra, Live Lab, the internet. So then, how to do something similar from the tools that we have? Right. It's really loud. Um, yeah. And it actually looks very different from Hydra because I think because of the resolution, I mean, Hydra's re resolution is somehow not so good. And oh yeah, I can add sharpening filter, which makes the uh, how do you say it like reaction diffusion kind of effect sometimes. Anyways, but I think it's gonna slow down a bit. So turn it off. Yeah, and people wouldn't notice what is Hydra and what is OBS. So that's, yeah, right. That is good. Very cool. Super nice. Thanks. Okay, I'm back with webcam. And you know, I was yeah. I I was reflecting a bit on because I have been working with seeds these days, and then it's a collect. Uh, it's it's more community based artwork, and I think we mentioned this the last time. Um, yeah, when we talk uh, while I was there in the house, is that it's interesting how, because there's so much people, there's so much things going on, then I cannot worry about how something will look like or trying to really, uh, yeah, concern about the final uh, aesthetic of something because there is so much people and other things that are involved in the whole process then just that process of being there with the people um, generate something different um, that I don't know if from an aesthetical point of view then work or not work as a piece of art, but nevertheless, as a framework, to possibility things and interaction with people in terms to collective creation works. And yeah, I was thinking about it that like because then 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 I think, you know, as as an artist, then I will be very I could be very harsh thinking this is art, this is not art. If I will working with myself or in the framework, but if I will be working with more people, then I I, I mean I can't still keep on doing those things, but since I'm not alone, they're, they're not so, uh, it's not the most important thing because yeah. the most important thing is being with other people and trying to create something together. Yeah, yeah I mean, actually, yeah, I didn't really expect 
my experience for the last uh, week seminar to be like that. But um, so I was not really making my own work, which <laughs> I often say this word, I, my own work, but whatever that means, um, because I, I don't know if is my is best practices my own work. Uh, no, uh, yes and no, I guess. Uh, but what I mean, you're is, one of the best ones. You're one of the best ones. <laughs> Uh, the, how did I write it on my web page, uh, website, Actually, like some, something like, you know, the most important figure. How in, the, yes, one of the best exponents in the field of best practice in contemporary dance. Yeah, uh, is one of the most important figures in the field of the best practice yes. in contemporary dance as, <laughs> and has been taking crucial role in the best practices chat since 2020. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what I want to say is I was just like, you know, um, just, you know, be there and just chilling. Uh, sometimes if anyone needs help to, you know, set up something with a ladder, I can hold the ladder. Or if someone needs to set up um, like video mapping, I can also help. And I was not really like, you know, doing something on my own, uh, except one thing that I did, which is um, this, I'm gonna bring, but, but I think that's, that was also fun because, you know, if you are like just working on your work, then mm -hmm. it's really hard to, you know, to do something together. Like it's some, sometimes you need someone who's just, you know, floating and like connecting things. And this is what I did. Um, did I send you the photo? No, maybe not. I don't think so. Yeah. So this is my work and uh, one of the visitors really liked this. Not, not just this, but me holding this because I was just standing like this during the, like the showing. I was just like doing this on the street because the, the venue was like facing the street. So I was on the sidewalk and like just holding this. Um, and one of the visitors really liked it. I really want her to come to the chat because she's really interesting person uh she does like makeup she's like a makeup artist and uh she wants to do makeup on me and uh wear a um, dress holding that next to a brothel that's closed right now but you know like just to be a uh, model as a prostitute and she wants to do a photo shoot so that might happen and uh Anyways, like this, you know, these random things happened, which was really nice. If I had like planned to, you know, do some video mapping on my own and do something, you know, then that wouldn't have happened. No, yeah, I think like there is, we, we speak of the, uh, in the practice of how we propose in a way this way of like do minimal interesting art that lingers just right in the middle between exciting and forgetting uh and i think that's it's that just nice so phrase, difficult. By the way. that was up because <laughs> i just wrote it to us in my head <laughs> okay. <laughs> <That> was, <laughs> okay forget about it <laughs> so uh, of course they have like few of those like the, but we propose this idea like just a like that is minimally interesting and it just lingers right there in the middle between forgetting and exciting and it's just so it's, it's just something that if it's too special, it lost its, it becomes something different. It becomes something that is more uh, back to, I mean, or, or more uh, back to this idea of art being something very special and for elites. And if you want to go even back just for rich people or just for an elite of people that can enjoy or can even pay art. Um, when it's too special, so it just excludes other ones who are enjoying the art. But at the other spectrum, you have also something that is just anything, and it still has to linger in the in between. It has to be special enough to be an, an art artifact. It cannot just be anything, um, and that's just something that I think. Uh, doing that kind of process by one alone is just different i think it's more difficult because you will be constantly trying to understanding what are you in that in that balance are you more on this side or are you more on that side but when you are with more people basically you are just insisting in something that 
as a framework you believe is interesting as an art piece, but many times are just random ideas and sometimes more, more uh, interesting ideas. And yeah, so I think this this is something that is uh, is in in that spectrum of what you were speaking when you work with other people. And I think that's very interesting for us to think in the future also when we think to uh, sandbox and to try to more invite more people to to join and play with the with the workshop, framework. for example. Yes. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. Because I think. Like in uh, just to add to what you said about you know being something special as art, whatever it is, uh, it also makes us vulnerable because people judge if it's an art or not, if it's a good art or bad art, and that's yeah. really hard sometimes, I mean, often. And uh, it's good when we can so somehow go around that judgment then it feels free but it's but how how do we circumvent that argument i mean we do it well like I think. Like, like what i what i'm thinking is that because yeah i'm thinking that one thing that i believe is that as an artist for to, you need to insist and almost be obsess about uh doing something because you need to if you want to develop a language so you need to just insist in, in in things that you believe are true and just start building a language right uh so in that sense i think you need to be uh you need time to be on yourself and then just doing this process but on the other hand also i think so this is just individually as yes. i think one myself i'm thinking how I think it's easy to, to develop a language, to create a new language. But if I will go uh, uh, behind and more as a critical uh, or as a, as a critic, then I will I also think it's easy to judge a work when it's made just for one person, because in a way I will start already assuming things of the person and I, I will judge easily a piece of work of somebody because it's just done by one person rather than when if i'm seeing a, a piece of work there is the result of a framework of more people working together i uh, i might not judge so easy because because of, because it's just because it's not one person um but i think it depends you know if it's like uh, I'm trying to think, um, but if they have like really specific framework, for example, if they're animation students and then they like video mapping to the same format and they somehow contribute, everyone contributed to work, then it's like kind of easy to judge because I mean, okay, it's not really done by as a collective, they prepared individually and show it together as a work, then yeah, it's, it's, it's not, doesn't align with what you said, but um, no, but I think I can, I, I don't know if I understand the way how I see what you're saying that I, I partially agree is that if there is a framework of a students coming from a, a animation school and they're working in certain frameworks, I think might be easy to judge even the framework, if the, the framework is, is well defined, let's say if it's close to crafting, then one can have tools to actually criticize the craft or not, right? Right. Because it's, it, it's not saying, yeah, rather than when it's something that is proposed as an artistic framework, then I will be more harsh on that. Or a dance, let's see. Or dance easier. or something. Yeah, something or, that comes with a skill. Yeah, yeah, something that comes more for uh, something, yeah, that it comes, it comes more for the skill, the technique, the tool itself the mastering of the tool itself, the body being in dance or the computer and after effects in, in animation or something like that. But it was, it's because how you said it makes total sense, but at the same time, I feel the project you're working on, like with the seeds or how I intervened the, the other students in the seminar is not typical that how you would work as a collective 
or maybe maybe it is. I don't know. But um, but it's been been at the same time. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Because we, you know, are let's say experienced and do it easily in a way. Um, True. But it's not always the case. No, but it's it's interesting what you're saying because, like in my process with seeds, for instance, like this is kind of the contradiction that I was trying to explain because in one hand, I, at this point in my life, I believe that this is actually an artist should take its time to develop its own language and go in that direction because otherwise it will just be generic. Uh, but at the same time, uh, then, so yeah, so at the same time, if I, so then if I go my, myself in seats and, and start building, then I will start, going really fast ahead of something that may you know i will start going okay this looks like this maybe if we keep on doing this in two weeks it will just look horrible or it just make me make no sense i will start all doing those all those judgments based off my thinking in regards to art um but then within the framework then just you realize actually without somebody telling you uh, actually, because you're not communicating this, but it, without somebody telling you, then you actually, you are with yourself like, oh, you know what, actually, I mean, you kind of like slow down the, you put down the sword, basically. Mm -hmm. You put down the sword and you are more, okay, maybe this is just something different. And this is still valid as an art. It's not only as a place to come together and just have fun, but as a, as a real piece of art that, stand by for itself but then there has to be a lot of trust basically and then we go back to all this that we have talked uh, at the beginning that just the space has to for, uh, provide a safe sp a space to not care about the other ones so in, the, in other words also to care that because I don't care what you're doing then I just start doing my thing and at some point then just we come together and then we see how to blend this thing, which happens in what we do, uh, and happens in those in those frameworks. If people just get busy with their stuff, and then sometimes they just comes and maybe they slow down, and maybe they need to rationalize this process. How do we put these two things together? But if they start doing this all the time, they just don't go nowhere, right? If, if you start like tedious. Because yeah, you cannot advance. Imagine if like if you if you if we need to start explaining to each other what are we doing. That's just I mean that in itself could be something. <laughs> yeah. that we should try it anyway. But, 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 but I, I get your point. For example, like let's say if we are aiming for something. For example, like uh, not a performance, but let's say we have a talk. Well, that's still possible. But in your case, you have an exhibition, so you have to make something at the end, whatever it is, right? So you have to show something. And if you, yeah, I, I, I understand that like if you come back to this, uh, uh, yeah, slow down too much, then nothing's gonna happen, which, but yeah, nothing is gonna happen. Sometimes it, it's true that, you know, people just like to talk about things and just like nothing's getting done. But it's, I mean, balance but, is hard. Yeah, yes, it's like what we were talking just is like, because as much as right one, this like, solo art is going for as much as valid is as much as the other one is valid uh, and both so it's just the uh, trying to have a, an absolute true <laughs> like who has who is like having like this hegelian true like this this absolute true is just impossible i may i may also a part of being impossible it just make no sense trying to aim for who is right? Right. Yeah. 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 Um, I just I thought about something uh, when you said I hey, like about working together. Um, I also noticed like when I work with someone or like or when I work alone, then things are super fast, like you said. And but at the same time, like what I make is not so interesting and I started to think that it's probably not really relatable to people because it makes sense in within myself but it's not something that people get it um, and if I work with someone it might slow down like with for example when I work with you then I show 
what I'm making and you know if it's too fast and if I'm just you know it's okay if we do things separately or individually but if it start to you know um, not transparent because I do something that you don't understand for example and it's just yeah it's just wrong um, that's one thing and also like for example I'm I did some like experiments with floor and what we do is actually like I already did in the past uh, with the sound live coding sound and you know doing some 3d spatialization of sound and stuff but and I actually used it in the performance last year but I felt it was something was missing um, that people don't really get it uh, but the te technical part is there and now I'm just like looking at those things I did in the last uh, during the last year and show her you know what this you can do it this way that way but it's that's it's makes much more I don't know why sense uh, much more sense when I work with someone because I have to explain maybe I don't know I don't know I mean the way who I, I relate this I think this is part of the chats when we talk at some point about this we make the analogy of the Windows Explorer being the 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 gallery director who went to holidays and never came uh, back uh, internet explorer six or something <laughs> yes so basically but this idea was just that it just through because in our case for in the case what we do is that we bypass all the the the, the heaviness of the politics saying that like the finding meaning like the ontological process of of the doing so as you said if i'm working alone then i might fast get into something that in, it has shape right from a tool-based point of view and it's formally good but i might get stuck fast because i need to do i need to start doing conceptual processes like oh i'm dealing with my own identities politics like rationing like thinking it's good bad good bad but when I'm in a process with you, then I don't have time to do this process. I need to just, so yeah, in a way it's like your presence there, it just bypass the politics and the complexity of that. Mm -hmm. That's the way how I perceive this. And I make the analogy because in different ways, I think that's a constant that I'm finding in the practice or as a strategy that can be utilized in other contexts, like how to find ways to bypass politics or when you get stuck in somewhere how to bypass that so uh yeah if i write a letter to you then not to you but then to the space or like how to find uh the artifact that is just so not to to uh avoid the problem because the problem is there to do something for it but then how to find an artifact and an excuse the internet explorer six or whatever is to bypass and not deal with the consequences of doing right mm. or wrong it's i don't know is it something speculative or it's i don't know what is this condition or the space or i think it's a hundred percent i mean if we're talking or if we're talking in our practice, I think it's 100% or very much speculative because then we don't know exactly how we look, but we know what we're doing. Uh, yes, so yeah, so we don't know actually the shape or like the final something, but we know that we are busy, you know? And it's normally while we are busy that sometimes just and we do this process like in the last session you asked me everything is okay like and we find all these little nu uh, nuances in the practice it's just a, a lot about the communication and how we find ways to basically yeah to address something yeah but maybe just going back to what you're saying in the, the core i think is very speculative but speculative in the sense of like the uh proposing a new world of this post-human uh so something that is not yet imaginable um 
Yeah. What's the what's this thing that uh, uh, what like a board with like alphabet and like a few people put the you know finger together and find the next like letter. the we had we had table like when they call yeah. the spirit. Yeah, I, I felt it's a little bit like that because uh, it doesn't work exactly. alone, right? But you no. need some people, and then something happens and. That's actually uh, a very good. That's a very good analogy because, in a way, if we that's a very good analogy because, if what we are saying in the practice is like we are trying to aim for self dissociation, and so distanciation from this persona that I'm here right now with my consciousness, then in a way, then I'm trying to call spirits to come, like what Aristotle will use uh, like to to call the catharsis, to come and all the muses to take me and to a different place and. It's very similar to the. It's, I think it's a really good analogy. This the the we have they going together somewhere and calling the spirits, mm. which is dangerous, right? Because at the same time yeah. you're playing with fire, because you, you're playing with fire at the same time. Yeah, I I think my mother always told me you never play that because yeah. <laughs> because it's I'm very, I was very Christian. My mom like do, don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, I was just thinking, like, if, if anyone did that with like a web interface, it should be possible, right? You just use the mouse, and you know, if someone connects together and somehow you know move the mouse together. Both together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and would be nice that at the same time we should do that. Like we should do that. Like we should start thinking the best practice in web design, like proposed, because that might be interesting. Let's say say that if you go to a page it's completely black or there is very little something, and then just when somebody join and then just magnetically goes there, and from what you're moving somehow you're revealing parts of something, something that is behind, and then you're revealing these parts. That might be interesting to go with in, into that narrative because that's that's a narrative. If that image, there's a narrative. It's just an, an arrow that is alone. Then another arrow comes, and this universe there is void. It's slowly something start to reveal when they travel to the universe. You see, um, like for example, I'm. I think I showed you some of the things, but uh, I'm trying with like kind of what I call generative dialogue on like in, or interactive uh, documentation, whatever. Um, basically, it's not like article with text and images, but uh, I take chunks of like a small, like one line of sentence, or it can be a paragraph with image, or it can be a video, and every part has a um, hashtag to it. And I start with like one uh, piece of text, and then you can click on the one of the hashtags, and then that will reveal uh, another chunk of text or image that has the same hashtag and you can like kind of navigate through so it's not linear or like it's always different because there's randomness or like which uh, option you choose will change the, the text so that's that's something I've been working on um, it could be it sounds very much it sounds very much like this Scott de la Junta PhD or like like the link that I shared that Diana shared with me or like this PhD that because they're so combulated with documents, they're just a document with links and links and links and links, and there is just no li linearity. And just you go through, I mean, just you go into this into the um, space and and that's it. It's very similar to, to not hashtags with hyperlinks. Yeah. That's actually interesting because that looks like you know it's it's not a thesis, but it's like a encyclopedia. Yeah, yeah. It's just you can spend. I think, I, 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 I guess you can spend endless hours. It's like the Louvre of the website. It's like a Louvre of a website, the Museum Louvre of a, of a website. It's just endless, and it's very interesting content there that you can just get lost. And I mean, what I think is cool is this idea. It's kind of like the 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 internet in itself. You know, like the when you just uh, get lost, how you call that when you get lost in clicking? There is a word yeah. for that. 
but basically just yeah just you start going for i don't know i want to buy a net art net art book by the way i want to buy a net art book so a good one that's why if you if you know if you let me know uh but it's just like and then i start clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking like two hours after and maybe i'm watching a cartoon about the russian spy yeah but yeah that so that would be interesting to somehow uh well it's it can be connected to the mouse idea or can be something separate but uh that's like something that interests me as a best practices in web design, especially because I think that's getting uh, more rare because of the social media, because, you know, in social media, you just say like, contained in their space that you don't yeah. really go outside. The, I mean, you no. can, but they try to, you know, make a wall around you. Some of the things that I have been thinking while I was writing this, uh, this thesis is of course i have to revive different things and then i went to images and some of the images of course because they are just screenshots are so badly pixelated that just because they are so bad they reveal different things from the image because there is just it, yeah so i cannot i did not that on purpose we do not on purpose but once i'm trying to put that in indesign or something there is just some uh like physical tray of just bad printing or something, the resolution. And I'm, I'm mentioning that in regards to the arrow and the hyperlink and thinking of the website and, and, and best practice in web design is uh, the idea of revealing, uh, because basically when you click this hyperlink, it's basically like trying to open gates, right? Um, but what if you never left the space? You know, what if you are not completely transported to the next space? So imagine that you're clicking something, but you're not completely. It's kind of like I imagine some kind of like a feedback loop. You see what I mean? Like the one that you were just trying today, that in a way you never left the space, but the windows were going. So in a way, if the click is actually is opening the gate, but you're never leaving, that might be something interesting. That is just like revealing. Uh, yeah, I think it's just interesting this idea of revealing, but not binary in the sense like now you are there. Yeah, this idea also like I had, and um, one of the things I tried. So you know, like if you use Hydra editor, you have the code in the URL, like with the uh, you know this is a question mark that we can yeah, add question mark these, and these and um, parameters query, ID. query or something. And yeah, it should be a query HTML. And I was thinking like, um, it cannot be with other people's page, but if I I decide on some kind of you know simple protocol that if you visit one page and uh, if you don't have anything uh, like uh, this query, uh, then you add that on like that web page will add that query. And that, let's say that's the Hydra code. So the page will show the Hydra uh, uh, texture on the background and then if you go to the, another link in that page maybe to different website that i made then it will continue using the same code so the yeah. like from where you visited the web page it will show different textures i mean yeah so that's, that's something i was thinking although yeah i kind of didn't really do it much because um i mean i have the code already and uh but yeah the question is like why and also it makes more sense if more people uh, participate in a way. Like a, I call it like web ring, and I also want to do a web ring again. But uh, yeah, it, it needs people to participate to make it more interesting. If it's just, I mean, we can do it together also. Um, but yeah, what happens if you know ten people, hundred people will do it, and then it becomes like a real network? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll be like, I think we'll be nice, like a gathering where you imagine that you go to like, you're trying to go to Chrome or searching for something. 
and then in a way you are not really living the space somehow you cannot reach what you're searching for so then in a way then so you're not succeeding in using chrome to as a tool uh but what happens if there are many people at the same time sharing the same space um yeah i'm just wondering if it's, if it's that because the i guess what it comes to my head at first is there should be desperation you know like should be very annoying if you're trying to open something and you cannot do it but what happens if you act, if you actually consciously you go to the space to share uncertainty in in the space and and then many people go to the same space to do the same process Like imagine you go to like, like imagine you go to the bank, and then you you go to pay something. But there's a, it's a big uh, line, and you have to wait. And then so your objective to go to the bank is to pay something. But because you have to wait, then you start talking. Maybe you met your wife that day, or something like that happens. So something around that idea that that in that scenario, the scenario of the Chrome, then is how to find ways to for the people to communicate and exchange something uh, that at some point, like the, if you think the example of the arrow with Olivia was like arrows doing something, but yeah, some, some way how people can interact and share this uncertainty or this uselessness, I will say, mm -hmm. this dead time. Or, or like agency, this not yeah. agency. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny because the, the bank you said um, because how we met is something like that. It's it's more specific context. It's true, but, it's but, true, yeah. <laughs> but we never said you know I I'm looking for someone to work for years <laughs> with. Uh, That's true. With uh, That's true. Dance and something. And then sometimes people were passing, and then we're hey hello bye bye. <laughs> but it was true. That was true. Yeah, that was like the bank waiting in the bank. That's true. Bank that never opens. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it's, it's nice. Um, we can keep it up in the air and think about it sometimes. You know, what is the browser that gives that kind of quality or a browser or web page? That would be yes. nice. And I think it's, yeah, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say too much about it because it's nice as an idea and, you know, it's it needs some time to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Also, also, I think that the could be like bringing that down to a more practical term could be just like if we find a way like to to sandbox what we do in a workshop or something that will be very nice. I think that will be a good way to start inviting other people and just to to see what other people will do actually. Yeah. I think it's very, you know, something that, I, that I'm seeing in the process that I'm doing now with these people in seats is that I I see like, for instance, uh, Angelo is the, is, the, is the, let's say the most visible uh, part of the project um, and the most recognizable artist there and, and stuff. And then I'm wondering also how, because sometimes he needs to come and say like, I wouldn't, I will do it differently. He said literally that, like, if you're working in something. So he's not doing that all the time, but sometimes he comes and says, like, I will do it differently. I will do this or this. So he's not saying do this, but then then you will do it or not. That's up to you. And then I'm just wondering, putting that in the context, like, <laughs> like how would be we have a say, like a sandbox, and then we buy somebody else, and then we are just kind of, like, happy, and this third person is start just, just ramping up i mean just doing things that we are not expecting and we bore like i'm really curious to see like what is happening what but no but no no way stop start again this is not like this because because we cannot do it it's like the is the is the we have basically you no know? it's like the we have table then just you open and you don't know might be super nice but it might be a completely just satan comes in and then just it takes you to the to the artists and it will be very cool like it, it will be very nice to to see what happens with other people and 
<laughs> how to deal basically i'm seeing more i'm trying to see more in the future this i think is more the concern how to deal with myself basically i'm not concerned with the person but i'm concerned more with my mental health <laughs> i think it's more with me like how to deal with myself in that scenario like but when you say that say a third person uh, you know commenting on it and not just commenting but you know like making suggestions or whatever is that something that you would hear during the practice or it's separate it will be uh, i don't know i think that's the, the that's the curious thing you know like because i i mean this is things that we can talk about it's just this is part of the things that i write that is clear to me that, it's, it's, it's funny because it seems like repeating like the conclusions of my of my of my thesis but is that one of the difficult thing parts of like writing that is like to we talk of this when you give me some feedback is like how to how to take space something that is just fully grasp where you are actually in the space with it like how you can take space something that is not that's not the medium for let's say the practice is just the practice and it touches different things. So it's not a cognitive rational process. I, uh, it's, it's a negotiation between a, a like an embodied uh, cognitive process and a rational cognitive process. It's a negotiation between the two of these. Um, so yeah, and then trying to text base something that is embodied but not only embodied, but it's in conversation. So meaning that you should have agency still to think about it, right? And, and just do the rational cognitive process. So put it that to a text-based, it gives an essence or try, it will try to do the, it, the best the text can to say what is, but it cannot be fully grasped by, by, read, by, by writing that because it's as, as it is in dance, it has the, moment uh, embodied presence you need to be in the space you need to experience the thing so i'm saying that in regards to what we were talking of the just only when somebody comes then we will see mm. like i see no but that's that's really interesting um i feel we should wrap up soon but um but i i think we have enough Things. You see my pigeon? Wait, you see there is a pigeon. <laughs> okay, hello. Maybe it wants to join the practice. <laughs> bye bye. That was a nice shot. <laughs> Great. So we have a guest this time. I'll, I'll okay. write it. <laughs> pigeon, right. Jorge, and Nauto. Um, <laughs> pigeon, Jorge, and Nauto. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I put like, like links in our shared document, but. And so again, I've been, you know, kind of researching uh, Bruto and oh, yeah. they, they have this thing, uh, Bruto notation, which I feel it's such a weird... Bruto notation? What is that about? I never heard of that before. Yeah, me neither. I cannot imagine. It's so strange that they say they named it notation because I think in Japanese it's more like a Bruto score, but basically it's like a a uh, bunch of words and like kind of instructions but they're often really abstract poetic that it's hard to grasp like you know it's not that you move this way but you know to become like you know pollen in the air or something like that um right and basically the the founder of buto hijikata how he taught students was using those text like that he named each movement with these uh, descriptions and that's that's how he taught the dance and uh, some students like well they took notes and some of them actually like published it later and one of them is actually uh, they published uh, into a website which is super nice I mean it's too clean for um, to, for me uh, for my taste but it's like really nicely done and you can click on some words it's like a wikipedia like a wiki of the buto notation so you can go to like related terms you can see images um which is really nice because it's not something that they added later but it came from the practice itself so that it's like the the text is embodied in a way and mm. 
that's something I think could be really interesting for us to think about so that it's not that always coming the text coming afterwards to describe something but the text but well that's kind of we try trying already but to to have it in the practice to really capture the moment what well, doesn't capture the moment but maybe yeah the body captures the text i don't know yeah but i think i partly disagree with what you're saying in the because i was checking for instance what we did the last time and I, I, you did something that I think I was doing often when I when I work with text is that you basically at some point you put some music and then you were dancing and then you you come back and then just you choose some of the words. This is what you came for or something. That yeah. was the song that it was playing there. And in my text, in my in my in my thesis, then I I uh, I make a uh, an analysis between this uh, "Where's my birds, my birds." of uh, Nanju Peck uh, in relation to how they approach time through post-production. And I, I will say that then I, that we bend time, uh, so not to post-production, but within an uh, archiving videos. And so not post-production, but in a different way. Uh, so then you just use in archiving, let's say, not editing videos. So that's one thing. But the other thing that I wanted to say is about the text, because in that video you use they use is this a dance question mark when the taxes are passing and then i will argue that that in the practice the text is it comes from an embodied experience and it can only happens at the moment uh because it's actually is there it doesn't really have an, a, a clear intention in the doing uh is not pre thought is just something that rises up in the in the moment and i will argue that what they were doing in the video is like there is a conscious uh choosing of the images and the text in order to evoke something for the for right. the viewer right and yeah so that's what i was i wanted to say like the um, yeah. yeah in that regard with the text that yeah. I, I said i use the hashtag the text is not static mm -hmm. and that's what you put it in in the last in the last performance your text is not a static and it just evolves as it. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Let's let's close here. But uh, but I'm still really interested in like this uh, Hijikata's approach because yes, what I understand is he constantly changes the choreography. Like even if like like just before the the show or like after one uh, performance, he will change something. And that's, I think something is there about him that was like he was trying to. Um, so there's something fluid, but I don't know. Uh, that's what I read, and I don't exactly. Well, there is impossible to to know what he was thinking, but it's something that I I'm, I'm interested. In. But well, I think is this is what you were saying. Maybe like the before we close this, I think it's very interesting. Because it's what you were saying that I, I was trying to imagine in other context in dance when you use some some words and and I think it's so interesting. And I also make a, the, the differ, differentiation from the way how I perceive how we use the text that is really random actually. Um, and in this case, in the way how you describe it that I haven't seen it, but it just it seems to me that is through words that open gates. That in a way, so then open a gate and at that gate, if you say that like through this movement, like you move like, I don't know, like the sun or you feel something like the sun, then it opens a gate. It's not telling you exactly what is it, but from that gate, you go somewhere else. And from there you go somewhere else. So in a way it's like, it's going somewhere together. So it's not random, but it's going. So it keeps on opening gates that it are consequently uh yeah so they are they, they are consequent of the previous one without the need to be rational in the thinking because it goes through the embodied experience nevertheless it goes in a nicely way it has to be organic like in that process the way how i see it it must be organic and i think it's very interesting like because it still is like it's using cognitive process but to open gates 
yeah. cognitive to possibility new new yeah. imagination. Yeah, yeah. That's the closing word. <laughs> so <laughs> please uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for the guest pigeon. Uh, but thanks uh, for the guest pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, see you next time.